Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. Um, it's more of a technical lesson this week, um, following on from last week. Um, we're going to be looking at methods for uh, essentially making your measuring better when you're working from life. Um, I'm going to be doing a few of these uh, types of sessions that will cover different types of measurement. But I wanted to give you a few tools that are useful for any type of measurement, anything that where you're kind of using your eye. Um, to a certain extent, they're not even quite measurement tools. They're more ways of approaching um, visual problems when you're copying something. Um, and the main two things we're going to look at are, they're called alignments and sighting angles or generally using angles. Um, and these two, two approaches of working from a subject are super useful for improving your accuracy when working from life. Um, and they're not really measurement um, processes exactly. Um, they're more ways of kind of thinking of your subject as you're working. I find if you're a bit too sort of strict with measurement, um, things get a bit, people get a bit stuck and they get a bit obsessed with measuring. It's not ideal. Um, and I find these this approach works a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I'm working over a... Um, a drawing that I printed out because I wanted to try to remove as many steps as possible so obviously you wouldn't be tracing you'd be working on a white piece of paper when you're making your own drawing but I wanted to kind of show you how your brain should kind of read the scene that you're looking at as you're working from it hopefully that makes sense um, and I've also chosen quite a complex scene so this is a still life it's got loads of stuff going on loads of little bits of objects um, and that's because I want to try to demonstrate kind of how many overlaps and and alignment things you can do, figure out. So we'll start with angles. Um, and to start with these angles, I am going to, I might actually, I'm just gonna swap, I think to charcoal because you know, it'll show up a bit better than these pencils I have. So to begin with, you if you've watched several of my videos or a reasonable number of my videos, you'll be used to my kind of approach of simplifying. So how you can go about simplifying something. Um, so we're going to be using simplified lines as we create this this kind of overlaid drawing. Um, so let's start with something pretty straightforward. So if I was drawing this this camera, I might think about starting from this quite straightforward uh, rectangular box, which is the kind of the the body of the camera. So if we started with the this right hand upright, um, we could then Trying to simplify it a lot. Basically simplify it to that upright and this line that runs across the top of the body. So if I was copying it in life, I know that if I run a horizontal, if I made my, my copy of this camera just run straight perpendicular from the top of that line, it's not going to be right. I can see by looking at this camera that that line tilts down. So this angle is more acute, it's closer together than if that was flat out or if it was up there or there. So if you imagine you've got a second line spinning out of this point, you want to try to copy the angle that it travels across to hit the top of that camera. So this, this is your angle here. As I say, if that was a horizontal, then it would be a broader angle and this is sharper. Now you don't have to draw these angles out, you're not measuring angles. You want to get a sense for if something was going up like that, how much wider is it? Or if it was say traveling further down, it would be sharper. You want to try to make sure your lines, so when you sketch your line in, you've got this first line sketched in, then you've got the top of it, and you want the angle to come off correctly. Now it's easy for this next one because I can see that just drops straight down it's parallel to this other one. But there you can see I've really accurately mapped in. Obviously I'm tracing over it, but so long as you roughly get the right feel for those angles, it'll work. Now this angle's hidden, um, but again I know this is sort of running parallel. So again, if we look for another angle, this, this lens is projecting forward of the rest of the camera to about this point. So that's pretty much a straight line. 
again this is a good kind of way of looking at simplifying things does the same thing up to about that point if we imagine a line running across the circle as I break down the image these two points that's where the change of direction comes and we get this curve so again let's think about the angle what angle does that drop down to there we go so I've only used one, two, three, four, five lines so far, but it's a pretty good encapsulation of the shape of that camera. If I could get this to be pretty accurate, this level of detail, it's easy to fill in all these details. You don't need to do any measurement at that point, you just use your eye. So we'll do the same thing here. They slightly splay out, but you can see if I was imagining what angle this is, this line drops down, it stops, then it's a big broad angle this time, it's not sharp. So it's gonna kind of slants down, that one's sharper. So we've got this angle here, we've got that angle there. All of this is happening in your mind though. So you don't have to, have to map out these angles. You're just thinking, is it sharper or is it wider? If I was making a correction, I might accidentally put something down like this and I think, oh no, that's too far out. But I know it's coming from this point, so I just swing it back in until it feels correct. So you're just making adjustments you do it in your head, if you lay it down and it's incorrect, you can do it on the paper. So then I know these two points, they swing down in a curve. Like that, and we've got our, our outline of that camera. Um, and that's pretty much as straightforward as, as it is. You just need this kind of simple anchoring system to then be able to lay your details over. Um, let's do the same thing. We're going to do the same process, but this time with this glasses case. We won't worry too much about the internal glasses just yet. Um, So if we start with the bottom of this class's case. Sorry, my uh, camera dropped out there. <clears throat> so starting with the bottom of this glasses case, we'll do the same thing we did for the top of the camera. So let's run a line across like this. And we're not gonna put this curve in, so we're just trying to try and give a sense, sense of this case. So we wanna get these two points and these two points. So again, we've got this point here. I know how long I want my line to be, but I don't know what angle it wants to be. So it could be that shallow, or it could be this sharp. Those seem too, that's too pointed, that's too wide for that, that edge. So to simplify it, I'm just gonna go like this. Same thing for this point. So it's connecting up. Simplify it with that line. Then we're gonna go up to these two points. So I'm thinking that angle, this angle, up to there, so that angle. And from here to here, again, we can connect a straight line across. And that roughly blocks in the shape. So these two shapes and their relative positioning is now in place. Um, a really simple one. We carry on this sits almost kind of straight onto us this uh, this little object and it's pretty much a perfect rectangle so all of these are 90 degree angles so it's really easy to place that one inside it kind of starts to connect these two together now the next thing I want to look at so we've got the idea of using angles so this is obviously a very rectilinear example. Actually, I might just quickly, before we move on, I'll do this cup just so you get a bit of an example, cup and brush. So this cup is more curved, which is maybe a bit more like how, you know, a face would be or something like that if you're working from, from a more organic object. So this time, let's start. You can start kind of arbitrarily at any point. Um, start at this point, and we'll maybe, you'd maybe take a measurement across just roughly figure out how wide you want the cup to be relative to everything else. That's something we'll go into in another lesson. But initially we're starting from these two points. 
and we want to find an, a direction change because our direction change becomes our our angle. And this is what I would where I would suggest the direction change comes from. So we've got one direction change here and then one direction change there. So it goes in, goes back out, and then goes back in. So we've got one line that drops down like that. Then we want to figure out how much does that angle back. Now it would bulge out more if it was a wider angle from that point, but it's a fairly shallow sort of angle. And then it's a fairly shallow angle that snakes back again. But those three lines give us a pretty good approximation of the edge of that cup. Likewise, we can drop another line in down from this edge. Then we could do a flat line pretty much across the top of there. Again, I'm, so from this point here, I'm looking for direction change. The next direction change probably comes from about there. It's got another straight line that drops down. Another line that drops down there. Then a little line that goes across. And you can see that runs parallel, so I'm kind of thinking what's parallel? You know, how much does it sharpen? How much does that angle sharp back? This cuts back out again. And then we can just probably do something like that. It's a pretty good approximation. Then we could start from this point here, do the same thing. So we've got one line up there, angle change, angle change, angle change, and then connect those two points together. And that simplifies our cup out pretty nicely. We can find some angle changes up here, the top of the cup. So we go there to here, there to there, and then we can look for how much, at what angle this brush is running relative to that line that runs behind the back of the cup. And then it's pretty straightforward over. So you can see I'm starting to get a pretty nice simplification of this scene. I mean, modernists obviously pretty much worked with this level of kind of distilling something down to its purest sort of forms. And it's quite nice, it becomes very geometric. Um, but it does give you, whatever you level you want to finish it, it gives you this solid basis to work from. Now, the, the second thing we're going to look at today is called alignments. Um, and alignments are useful for, in a scene like this, they're useful for figuring out where objects need to be placed relative to one another across a large portion of the scene. So it's relatively easy to kind of figure out where buttons would be within this camera shape that we have. But it's trickier to figure out exactly how high up or how low or how far to the left or right the camera is relative to other objects in the scene. Um, this becomes useful in portraiture to a certain degree and certainly working from any kind of figure, like full figure piece, um, where you've got a lot of different limbs or parts of the body and you want to try to make sure everything lines up right and particularly so that things feel like they're correctly balanced. Um, but essentially what we need to do is we just imagine that there are either um, vertical lines running across your image, or we've got, oh sorry, that was horizontal, vertical like this, or horizontal like that. So if you imagine a line just running straight down what you're looking at, so it's, it's just kind of dead straight, vertical as you look, or horizontal as you look kind of like the horizon. And you can see where do things hit. So Let's take this point for instance. I want to try to figure out where this point of this camera lies on a horizontal line relative to other stuff happening in the scene. So if I draw a horizontal line across, I dipped back a little bit there, but approximately that line that runs through this point in the handle and it runs through kind of roughly halfway up the cup. So I know that the top of the camera is halfway up that cup. If I was to run a straight line across like this to the top of the cup, I can see the top of the cup roughly hits the top of this wheel in the background. Um, if I ran a line across the bottom of the camera, I can see the bottom of the camera runs just a little bit below this kind of major change in the, the glasses case. It also hits the center of this uh, perfume bottle that's sitting next to it or the, the base of the perfume bottle. So then I know that if my perfume bottle was placed incorrectly, I'd need to move it up or down, or I need to move the camera around. 
but I can see just by looking all the way across the image because something that students they often do is they get a bit too fixated on um, specific details within the image and this is a good way to always kind of think of the whole image at once the whole of your drawing um, if I was to draw a straight line down the edge of this book you can see the edge of the book roughly hits the corner of that camera so that creates my alignment you'll also start to see that by doing this sort of thing you become a bit more aware of the composition so alignments are always quite important to composition if the camera is a little bit inside or outside that point it probably wouldn't work quite as well as that edge of the lens just matching up with the edge of that book which is a nice little compositional detail but this is a really useful tool I really recommend using alignments and angles but particularly alignments because it's quite easy often when people are drawing noses or mouths and that sort of thing and they don't really think about where the mouth is placed relative to the eyes or the top of the head um, and then it's just as simple as imagining a little line dropping down you can see the corner of the mouth is either inside or outside the corner of the eye for example which is a, a typical issue that people have um, and it's really easy to fix that so I really recommend using these these little devices for your measurement um, and we'll be getting into some more measuring stuff maybe not next week but certainly in the next few weeks um, actually we'll probably will we'll try to get measuring done next week then we've got a break um, we'll be moving into a new longer project at the beginning of next term um, but yeah that's it for now so have a go with using these sort of techniques in your next uh, drawing that you make particularly if you're working from life have a go at it um, and hopefully it, it helps you guys out um, as always follow us on YouTube and click th click the link through to the website if you want to sign up for tuition from myself and my fellow tutors um, but yeah that's it for now and I'll see you guys soon <laughs>